In hierarchical clustering, we build clusters step by step. Usually, it's a bottom-up strategy where you take all your individual data observations and you, you find uh, ways to sort of aggregate them together. This technique is called an agglomerative hierarchical clustering approach. The contrast to that is a divisive hierarchical approach, which starts with all of your data uh, as one cluster and then starts breaking that up into smaller and smaller clusters. Again, you need some type of dissimilarity measure, uh, just like you do with uh, k-means method. One interesting note is you don't actually need the uh, information on all the features themselves. All you need is a distance matrix that shows you the distances from each object to every other object which essentially would be an n by n matrix of distances where n is the number of data objects or the number of observations in your data. Given this dissimilarity matrix, you start with the n clusters. So you, this is an aggl agglomerative approach. You start with n clusters and then you find your element in the matrix that has the smallest value. So this would represent the two data objects that are closest together. You take those two data objects and you combine them to create a new cluster. So now you end up with n minus 1 clusters of data. So you started with the n clusters of data. Each object is its own cluster. And now you go in your next step, you have n minus 1 clusters of data, where most of your clusters are single object clusters, but you have one cluster that has combined two data objects. And then basically you repeat this process over and over again. Each time that you perform the process, you have to recalculate the distance between the resulting clusters of objects and the, uh, the data points and other clusters around them. The distance or the dissimilarity between two clusters containing only one data object is very easy. It's just the dissimilarity of the two objects specified in the matrix. However, computing the dissimilarity between clusters that contain more than one data object is more complex, and there are multiple ways of doing it. The centroid method will calculate the distance between two different clusters as the distance between the centroid of those two clusters. Average linkage is based upon the average distance between all pairs of points of the two clusters. Single linkage is the distance between the two most similar data objects of the two clusters. And complete linkage is the distance between the two most dissimilar data objects. So you have a picture that kind of looks like this. The red arrow shows you the centroid technique. So it's the distance between the centroids. The green arrow shows you the single linkage technique. It's the distance between these two closest points. And the blue arrow represents the complete linkage. The average linkage would be based upon the average of all pair distances. Each one of these techniques has sort of characteristics that are associated with it. Single linkage can produce what are called chains in the data. We'll see an example of that later on. Complete linkage can lead to very compact clusters, and average linkage also tends to compact clusters. Taking these two exact data sets and using single linkage versus complete linkage, you can see that you end up with uh, very different results. There's another method called Ward's method. This method actually takes the number of objects that are being classified into a cluster into account. And it sort of attempts to uh, balance out your clusters themselves. On this slide, I'm just showing the, an example. If I take a, a, a cluster C that's been combined with C prime, and now I'm looking at how do I uh, possibly combine it with cluster C double prime. And so the single linkage, complete linkage, average linkage, and centroid methods we talk about We've talked conceptually about how you would do that, and, and, and these are the formulas that are associated with that, as is the, the ward function. Now, the dendrogram is the primary visualization for hierarchical clustering. The cluster merging process arranges the data points in essentially a binary tree. When two clusters are merged, the distance between those two objects or those two clusters is represented by the height uh, in, of, of the tree respective to that, to that merging. So let's look at an example. If you have the clustering of these values, 2, 12, 16, 25, 29, and 45, the various approaches to measure the distance between the clusters will lead to different 
dendrograms. Using the centroid method, so we take these objects, 12 and 16, and we combine them together because they're the closest. Uh, and 25 and 29, or I guess it would be a tie because they're, they're four apart, so they're, the, they're also uh, the closest pair. And we calculate their centroid. So the centroid of this cluster is 14. And then now I try to compare the value of 14 with all the other objects and see which is the closest. 2 is the closest value. And so I will put now uh, these data into uh, one cluster, and I'll calculate that overall centroid. And I'll repeat the process. So my value here that represents this set of data is the value 10. And I look to see which cluster or data point it should be combined with. And I uh, continue to build uh, this tree. Another feature of dendrograms is that you can cut them at different heights. So if I were to cut this dendrogram here at this height, I end up with four clusters. If I cut this dendrogram at this height, I end up with two clusters. So uh, the, the distances between clusters are represented in, in the heights in these binary trees. And you can think about cutting these trees at different locations to produce different number of clusters. Under single linkage, I would also um, group 12 and 16 and 25 and 29. But the next step after that, and you can tell this based upon the heights of the, uh, the point where these, these clusters are merged. Um, so this is the next thing that happens is that this group 12 and 16 gets merged to this group 25 and 29. So that different sort of um, series of events that occur in the single, single linkage technique. So now these two are being uh, combined. And then, uh, and the reason why they're being combined is because the closest point between these two is 16 and 25, and the difference between 16 and 25 is 9. Um, whereas the difference between 2 and 12 is 10, and the difference between 29 and 45 is 16. So these are merged together, and then I continue the process. Again, the height of the dendrogram represents uh, how different two different clusters are. So using complete linkage, I see I have a totally different um, uh, representation. 12 and 16 are, uh, are merged together, and then they're merged with the value 2, just like we saw with the centroid method. But instead of now adding in this group 25 and 29, you can see its closest with respect to the complete linkage would be the value 45. So now I have these sort of two different sets of clusters, but the distance between this cluster and this cluster is based upon the furthest value. So a uh, value of 43 in this case, 45 and 2 are the two furthest points. And so the distance between these two clusters is a value of 43. And that's represented by the height of, uh, of the dendrogram here when these two clusters are merged. Based upon the types of uh, clusters that exist in your data, you're going to have different shapes of your dendrograms. If my data looks like this, you can see I definitely have three very compact clusters, and an associated dendrogram from a hierarchical clustering technique might look like the following. You can see that my intra-cluster distance is small, but my inter-cluster distance is very large. And so this is indicative that I actually have three clusters in my, in my data. So I could use this information to help guide a k-means clustering if I wanted to use that. The dendrogram for this data set might end up looking like this. So you can see in this case that I end up with, with two sort of basic clusters. Where this branch represents the, the values here in the middle, where this branch over here might represent the outer ring, depending on, of course, the linkage technique that you use. If your data is pretty well mixed, the dendrogram that you end up with may not be that informative in terms of the number of clusters that exist uh, in, in your data. So how do you choose the right number of clusters? With hierarchical clustering, you can specify a minimum desired distance between two clusters. And you can stop merging clusters if the closest two clusters are further apart than this distance. You can visually inspect the dendrogram and essentially find a good cut level. So where would you like to, to cut this? Uh, to determine whether you know, how, many, how many clusters that you end up with. There are more sophisticated uh, techniques. 
You can analyze the sequence of distances during the merging process. Try to find a step in which the distance between two clusters merged is considerably larger than the distance of the previous step. And there are several different heuristics that will help you uh, with this. The next technique that we look at is called density-based clustering, and it takes a very different approach to building clusters than what we've seen so far.